hello no planner <laughs> the new start for me firstly i'm really sorry if there are problems with the sound in this video my microphone is really really not working um but i shall carry on i shall just ignore that so please bear with me i hope it doesn't put you off watching the video if there is a bit of background noise because this one is one of these videos that i just really want everyone to watch <laughs> <laughs> there is a massive, massive problem in the planner community if you are going to buy a planner online. And that is the difference between A6 and personal size. OK, so first things first, then. Why is it a problem? So ultimately, then, people confuse A6 and personal size. And I've got here luckily from the same shop as well so you can see the difference i have got a personal and an a6 planner side by side so ultimately the problem with the confusion between these sizes is you might end up buying the wrong stuff and it happens all the time really really does um and normally what happens is I like people order what they think is the correct size and it's not because wherever they got the planner from or their last set of inserts or something like that it was mislabeled so people go around thinking that they have an A6 they actually have a personal and it kind of depends on where you buy your planner from so if you are in the UK like me if you go to a high street shop it's really difficult to get an A6 I had such a game trying to find an A6 planner originally because I was going to the shops in the UK and I was looking on things like the Filofax website, stuff like that. And then when I was getting a little bit desperate and I just thought, you know what, I just want something A6 so I can try it. I went to Amazon and I am one of these people that uses Amazon far too often. And this was a massive source of problems. I ordered not one, but two different a6 planners and what turned up were personal ones so i started to look a little bit more into this kind of thing and there's a lot of confusion in some shops amazon is really bad for it and also um some chinese shops like aliexpress that kind of thing really bad for it and you tend to see a lot of personal slash a6 size and it's not the same I cannot, cannot state that enough. It's not the same. So bear in mind, if you are a shop owner and you love A6 and you do loads of A6 stuff, then you're going to know thoroughly what that is. If you're a shop owner and you have what you think is A6, but it's actually personal, you're going to label your stuff as being that size. So I've had people before say things like, well, I've ordered A6 from a shop before and it was fine. That shop was also wrong. <laughs> it happens all the time it's really really bad and I wish people would be consistent with it but it's just not that easy so let me get geeky with you for a minute then and let me talk to you about the A paper sizes so I'll move this out of the way and what I've got I'm just going to go into teacher mode for a minute apologies um, so I'm in the UK and it's different to kind of, I would want to say the default letter size in the US. So here, and forgive me with my sellotape paper together, I couldn't find, I don't have access to letter paper here easily. So let me just put these together, show you. So that is the difference between A4 paper, which in the UK and pretty much most places apart from the USA and Canada use the A sizes of paper. So A4 is a common printer size compared to US letter paper. If I flip, you can see how much wider it is. It's not that much different, but it's enough to make a difference where it matters. So let me just label these then so you know. So take my trusty mod liner here. In fact, I'm gonna use the other end of this one. Oh, don't you just love your linden pens? <gasps> so this is, This is US letter. Okay, but this is A4. Right. Now, for the purposes of our video, 
I'm just talking about A4. And those of you in Canada and in the USA, I'm really hoping that this causes one of those light bulb moments where you're like, oh, I get why that's not the same now. So you will have seen A5 planners. Now, A5 paper in, well, in the UK at least, <laughs> I'm sure on other bases too, is really common because A5 is, let me just get my uh, origami hat on for a minute there and try and be as accurate as I can. <laughs> So hard to do when you're filming yourself, actually, to be fair. <laughs> so A5 is A4 folded in half. So we have, oops, are there any again? So we have A5, okay? So it's a really nice and easy size if you're using A4 paper, because if you're using that straight away and you have some A5 printables, you know you're gonna get two per page. So, moving on from that then, can you guess where A6 comes into it? Can you guess what I'm going to do next? What I'm going to do is fold this in half again. So, let's try and be as accurate as possible, otherwise I'm going to have really wonky pages. But, here we go. Right. I'm thinking of that thing about where how it's only possible to fold paper a certain amount of times before it reaches the moon or something. What is that statistic? Will someone drop a comment and let me know, please, because that's going to bug me. So this is A6. Okay. Now, notice the proportions of this. It's the same proportions, as you can see, as A4. Proportion is really important. So on a piece of A4 paper, we can fit, ignore that because that's confusing, one, two, three, four pieces of A6. Right, A6 is that. Now, the A paper sizes, oh, there's like a really long and boring history. I'm just gonna flash up a little info screen on that so you can see the A paper sizes are very tightly, um, measured, I want to say, what's the word for it? Like, it's a definite size, you know, like, there's no interpretation involved. You know, if you buy A4 paper, it's going to be A4 paper. If you buy A5, it's going to be A5. It might be cut slightly badly, <laughs> not be a millimetre over or something, but it's going to be that size. There is no interpretation. So let's compare that then to personal size. This is where I'm hoping it makes the most sense. So can you see, let me just find you a blank-ish kind of page so you can see a bit better. In fact, I'm just gonna go take it out. I'm gonna come back to that in a bit. Can you see the difference in proportion between these two pages? So this is my personal size. Again, that's my A6. So the proportion then, this is, a narrow page. This is the narrowest of pages in a proportion kind of sense. You know, it's not the smallest, but it's narrow compared to how tall it is. This is completely different. Let me put them together for you. So can you see that is how much taller it is? And you can see on there, hopefully, that that is how much wider it is. So it's a different page proportion. They are also different dimensions. I'll flash up a little info screen so you can see one compared to the other. So you can see those differences in millimetres and also in inches. So you can check. If you're in the UK, you can check really easily because you can just grab a sheet of A4 paper and do a quick test and hold it up to your planner to see what you've got. That's going to be the easiest thing. So hopefully then you're starting to get an idea at about how to tell at a glance from what you've got but there's another way to tell let me grab a page out of my a6 planner again so hopefully i can find the notes one that i haven't been scrolling all over yeah there we go look perfect so here we go oh i miss this planner <laughs> i love this one so much i actually really like a6 i think it's such a nice size so here then we have, I'm just going to label it for the sake of being really, really clear. We have A6 and we have 
basics and personal side by side excuse my handwriting i am a member of the messy handwriting club <laughs> anyway so planners have equal spacing apart from the franklin covey classic they have equal spacing between these holes also i think the older van der Speck minis but anyway <laughs> Have equal spacing here. The thing that tends to vary is the number of holes you get and the gap in between. So if you've got an A5 planner, then you're gonna have a larger gap between those sets of holes. If you have an A6, you're gonna have a smaller gap. If you're gonna have pocket, you're gonna have no gap, just a continuous line of six holes. So that's a really quick way to tell at a glance what you've got now let me compare for you again so you can see on here so the holes should line up on one set because they're equally spaced but they don't line up on the other the rings can you see that properly the rings although the sets are the same the gap in between is different now let me show you in another way here is my old, oh, I loved this. Here is my old A6 planner. And you could see there's not a huge gap between these rings. Now I have here, this is the same type of ring mechanism as is in here, but this is for a personal planner. So if I compare that, you can see, I mean, try and get like a good angle for you so you can see really clearly. Yeah, there you go. So can you see, that these bottom ones are the same again and the gap between each of them is the same but it's this middle gap that's different so one way to tell from a photo is to have a look at the middle gap it's easier when you've got one side by side so you can tell the difference failing that have a look at the page proportion does it look like that narrow page it's going to be personal if it's got this kind of shorter more squat kind of proportion it's a6 but they really really are not the same and crucially they're not compatible so if you have a personal planner and you try and put an a6 page in your holes will not line up now some people i say they're not compatible and i'm kind of cringing because i know that you're oh, technically they may be maybe compatible <laughs> before someone shoots me and points it out in the comments but some people like to have an a6 planner and punch personals because look the holes do actually fit on the page so i know some people with louis vuitton planners in particular have tried to squeeze them in so the benefit being you get more width to write on because if anything puts people off about personal size it's normally the width of usable space that you get on your page anyway i'm sidetracking <laughs> so I am really hoping that that has helped you to see the difference between personal and A6. So if you are sitting with what you think is an A6 planner in front of you, do me a favour, will you check? <laughs> because you might find that you actually have a different size altogether. Um, so also if you want to go really really down the wormhole with this one wormhole rabbit hole oh, i'm not sure what that phrase is but anyway if you want to just get lost on google for a minute just have a look see what the extent of this problem is if you do a google image search and type in a6 planner you'll get a complete mix of personal size in a6 oh <laughs> Right, so that is the end of my little effort to try and correct the confusion between these two sizes. If you know someone that is looking for an A6 planner, oh good Lord, please do me a favor, please share this video with them. Share it as much as you can. <laughs> Thank you for watching, if you are indeed still watching and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.